Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Conqueror's Blade. So today we are going to be kind of digging down a little bit into the mechanics of way of how weapon damage, weapon penetration and armor all kind of interact with each other. Or at least attempting to do some, uh, completing some experimentation on kind of how that works and kind of see if it's actually any good. Because it's one of those things that's really not given any information on. You know, if you look on the website, it just says weapon damage increases damage, weapon penetration increases damage. But it doesn't differentiate between how the two of them go about that. There's really not a lot of data on it. So that's kind of what I wanted to explore into a little bit and try and find out a little bit more. So if we head over to our spreadsheet, we can try and see how this looks like and try and break a few things down because it's it's pretty complicated um, and I'm not particularly great at laying my spreadsheets out. So let me just explain briefly what you're looking at. So along the top, we've just got the information about the attacking class. So the, the class that's doing the striking, doing the damage. So we've got two tests with the longsword, two tests with the poleaxe and two tests with the musket. And then we've got the enemy defense. So the defense level of the unit which is receiving the hit. So the longsword is striking at an enemy unit which has a slashing uh, resistance of 114 in the first test and then 600 in the second test. We've then got the attacking damage of the longsword and the attacking um, armor penetration values. And that is for the relevant um, uh, attack direction for slashing for longsword, slashing for poleaxe and then piercing for the musket. But it doesn't make any difference in that regard. It's just the figure. So I've just taken the figure relative to the relevant uh, attacking damage that it does. Then below that, I've just got the recordings of each hit during the duels. Um, I didn't do this very scientifically. I just recorded a handful um, over a couple of duels. And as you can see, I just kind of wrote these down and then averaged them at the bottom. So we're getting a bit of an average value for the average hit that this longsword with you know this um, attacking statistics does against a target with this much armor. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. And from that, I hope to be able to learn the influence of armor penetration and weapon damage because we know the changing armor values across the across the various tests, and we also know the changing armor penetration values of the different weapons, which I've slowly been increasing. You know, with the longsword being pretty low at sort of 1,118, up to sort of the musket, which has just got an insanely high penetration of just under 3,000, which is pretty insane. And then we can kind of see the results from that and the average hits. First thing to note is the effective difference that a, a good armor makes. From 114 obviously being a very low armor value, um, even pretty new players are likely to have a higher value than that. But you can see the damage is really high, you know, 1200, 1300 averaging at 1283. Compared to then a long sword to hitting a player with a value of 600, the damage almost halves. So yeah, good, good tier armor actually makes a real difference um, to your sort of amount of resistances at least in the case of a unit that has relatively a low penetration and relatively low damage. But interesting things to note that didn't quite make sense to me or didn't what, what I expected. So the damage of the longsword is 1214, yet the average damage is quite clearly exceeding that when the enemy has low armor. We also see this in the case of the musket, which had 2438, yet the average damage was almost 2700. So against low armored targets it seems that weapons with high damage and high penetration exceed the stated damage so it kind of goes to show that there's a little bit more to the damage than just a slashing damage or just piercing damage there's obviously more factors behind that that are immediately clear and if we just hop back over to the game we can kind of see that slightly when we hop over to one of the tech trees um, let's see if i can find the attribute that i'm looking for i probably can't one that says increase minimum damage. Uh, I bet I'm not going to be able to find it now. Damn it, what was it in? What was it in? Where were you? Uh, maybe it was on like an archer militia or something. Yes, that's here we go. Increases minimum damage dealt by 4%. So that goes to show that you could do that and that would increase the effective damage of the archer militia, yet it wouldn't increase their uh, piercing damage. You can see it just makes no difference to the piercing damage. So this value here, the damaging value, not the only thing to take into account when looking at this. We're just not told about the hidden range statistics that's put behind it or this damaging factor that's kind of hidden there. Obviously just something that they hide from visibility. So moving on to the effectiveness of armor penetration or kind of what can we learn from the tests that we get. So I think that the armor penetration doesn't make a massive difference. So we see that the armor values here is 600 and the average hit below your damage when 
hitting them with a longsword with relatively low armor penetration is 559. So, oops, let's open that. I'm not trying to format a cell. So you can see that realistically, when your armor value is about 600, it seems to be negating about 600 points worth of damage from the longsword. We then move over to the pole axe, which has significantly more penetration, around sort of 600, 700 more penetration. And you can see the average hit is about 600 less than the um, average damage, attacker damage of the pole axe. So again, that's really similar, despite having 600 more penetration. The actual, the, what it's hitting below its damage is still about 600 less than its damage potential. And then we move over to the musket, which has just got the insane um, amount of armor penetration. It is a bit less. Instead of 600, we're now 416. So obviously the armor penetration is having a sort of an effect there, but it's not a massive effect considering how insanely high that armor penetration is. And you consider the armor value on this test was actually a little bit lower as well. So... For me, I think it kind of shows that the damage is the more important factor because realistically, no matter what your penetration is, the 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 damage is always going to be sort of um, less than the armor value. So if someone has an armor value of 700, then I think you could expect your damage to be, you do to them, to be 700 less than your actual damage score, if that makes sense. It feels like it's really confusing even to me. <laughs> but as you can see, so I think my point is, based on these figures here, that you're better off putting your points into damage than you are armor penetration, because armor penetration doesn't, despite getting significantly higher, it does have an effect, definitely, but I think its effect is quite small, and I think an increase in damage would have more of an effect than an increase in um, armor penetration. So I think the long shot of that is if you're a melee unit doing slashing damage, then you want to be putting um, your points into uh, strength. You can see them here. It actually tells you. If you're doing slashing damage and blunt damage, you want your points in strength. If you're an archer or a musket and you're doing piercing damage, you want your points in agility. I think armor is actually quite a good um, thing to put your points into as well because you can actually increase your defense quite a lot by increasing the armor value. I think significantly. I think in the case of the longsword, which I'm using, is the exception because of its self heal. But we're not going to get sidetracked into that. So yeah, I think damage, not armor penetration. But uh, I'm kind of really interested to see what other people think about this because I think there are more people out there who are obviously clearly much more experienced at this game than I am, and they may have more of an insight from the data that I've collected so far, or maybe able to collect more data and offer some more insights. If I can, I'll just find I'll find somewhere to upload this spreadsheet and I'll put a link so you can download it in the uh, video description below. If you want to download and have a look at this data yourself and run any tests on this data, then you can do that. i will be really kind of interested to hear what anyone else has to say on the issue. And yeah, I guess finally to say if that was unclear, which it, it probably was, because it just felt pretty unclear as I was explaining it, then do ask any questions you have in the comments down below. Um, because I'll be happy to try and clarify what I was saying. And yeah, hopefully it's interesting. If it was, please subscribe to the channel because we're going to be having lots more Conqueror's Blade content. And I shall see you guys all on the next episode.